Speed Comics number one, October 1939, published by Harvey Comics. At the time, the title originally was published by Brookwood Comics, a new comic publisher in October 1939, and they would release only this one title, the first 11 issues of Speed Comics. The title was eventually acquired by Alfred Harvey and released by Harvey Comics. The editor at Brookwood Comics was Maurice Rosenfield. Shock Gibson, the human dynamo, made his first appearance in this issue. Gerber rates this book a 7 for rarity. Overstreet speculates that this might be the first full-page panel ever in comic books. There is a Windy City Pedigree copy of this book. This comic was on the newsstands alongside Marvel Comics No. 1 and Superman No. 2. The cover features Shock Gibson, an early superhero comic book cover, with art possibly done by Bob Powell. The Human Dynamo is the title of the 26-page Shock Gibson story written by Maurice Rosenfield and Bill Scott, with art possibly by Norman Fallon, this early superhero strip featuring Robert Gibson as Shock Gibson. It's his first appearance and origin. This story features zombies and the villain Baron Von Kampf. An Adventure with a Man-Eating Plant is a two-page text story written by Edward Lambert with art possibly by Bob Powell. Landor, Maker of Monsters, is a four-page story with art by Bob Powell. It's an early comic science fiction genre strip featuring the villain Landor's first appearance. The Super Death Invention is the title of the six-page Biff Bannon story written by Dick Briefer under the alias Remington Brandt, and he also did the artwork, and this story features the first appearance of Biff Bannon, a Marine. Superman number 2, October 1939, published by DC Comics. Overstreet ranks Superman number 2 among one of the most valuable comic books of all time. Whereas issue number 1 of Superman reprinted action comic stories, this one reprints from the Superman newspaper strips, with art by Joe Schuster and Paul Cassidy, stories by Jerry Siegel. There's a full page ad in this issue for the 1939 New York World's Fair. This historic comic book was the first ever to to sell 1 million copies, which it achieved over two different printings that were quickly released. Therefore, this is actually the best-selling single comic book issue of the 1930s. It is also the most common and highly graded comic of the 1930s at the CGC on their census. This comic is historically important as it proved that the Superman fad was not a one-shot, but that sales actually even increased on issue number two over the astounding record sales of number one. This further helped guarantee the success of the superhero genre and boom, and publishers continued to flood the market with new competitors. There is a Davis Crippen D-copy pedigree copy of this book. Vin Sullivan was the editor on this issue at DC Comics, which went on sale August 19th, 1939. This comic was on the newsstands alongside Marvel Comics number one. Superman was a daily newspaper comic strip which began on January 16th, 1939, and a separate Sunday strip added on November 5th, 1939. The strips ran continuously until May 1966. Superman, of course, is featured on the cover with art by Joe Schuster. There is a one-page illustration called Superman, the Man of Tomorrow. The Comeback of Larry Trent is a 16-page Superman story from the team of Siegel and Schuster, featuring Clark Kent as Superman, George Taylor, first appearance of Larry Trent, Charlie Bennett, Jock Kane, Slugger Barnes, and the villain Tom Croy. Superman saves the former heavyweight boxing champion of the world from committing suicide. Superman's Tips for Super Health is a one-page story from Siegel and Schuster. Superman at the World's Fair is a promotional ad. Superman Champions Universal Peace is a 24-page story from the team of Siegel and Schuster featuring Clark Kent as Superman. George Taylor, first time he's been named. Lois Lane appears with Professor Adolphus Runyon, who dies in the story. The monkey Ambrose, who also dies. The villain Bartow. And the first appearance and death of the villain Lubain. Clark Kent is assigned to interview Professor Runyon, who claims to have invented a gas so powerful that it can penetrate any type of gas mask. This is possibly Jimmy Olsen's first appearance in the Superman newspaper strip. 
Superman of America Action Comics is a two-page promotional ad. Superman and the Skyscrapers is a 16-page story from the team of Siegel and Schuster, featuring Clark Kent as Superman, a cameo of George Taylor, a cameo of Pete Ascanio, who dies in the story, first appearance of the villain Nat Grayson, and Butch Grogan. Down the Steps of Police Headquarters hurried Big Mike Caputo is the title of the Superman two-page text story from Siegel and Schuster, featuring Clark Kent as Superman, the first appearance of the villain Big Mike Caputo, and the villains Sneer and Fink. Superman also appears in another promotional ad from the publisher. Magic Comics number 3, October 1939, published by David McKay Publications. This issue went on sale September 8, 1939. Henry is featured on the cover. The editor at this time at David McKay Publications was Marjorie McKay. There is a Mile High Pedigree copy of this book from the Edgar Church Collection. This comic was on the newsstands alongside Marvel Comics number 1 and Superman number 2. Henry is featured on the cover, as well as some kangaroos in this humor cover. Mandrake the Magician appears in an eight-page story written by Lee Falk with art by Phil Davis in this early adventure superhero story, which is reprinted from the newspaper strips. And Popeye appears in a four-page story from writer-artist Elsie Cigar, also taken from newspaper strip reprints. Mystery Man Comics, number three, October 1939, published by Fox Comics. The Green Mask is our cover boy, while the Blue Beetle makes one of his earliest appearances ever. The comic was on the newsstands alongside Marvel Comics, number one, and Superman, number two. There is a Billy Wright pedigree copy of this book. This book went on sale August 10th, 1939. The editor at Fox Comics at this time was likely Victor Fox. The Green Mask appears on the cover, drawn by Lou Fine. And the Green Mask story is nine pages long, drawn by Walter Frame, featuring Michael Shelby as the Green Mask, and the first appearance of the villain, J.J. Facken. And this story would be reprinted in the Green Mask number 1 in 1940. Rex Dexter appears in a six-page story called The Cone-Shaped Planet, drawn by Dick Briefer, and Rex and Sind are exiled from Earth in the story. Wing Turner is a three-page story drawn by George Tusca, under the alias Floyd Kelly. Blue Beetle appears in a four-page story, possibly written by Will Eisner, with art by Charles Nicholas, featuring Dan Garrett as the Blue Beetle, and the first appearance of the villains, Spike and his gang, in a story called The Lone Shark Racket. The story would be reprinted in Blue Beetle No. 1 in 1940. The Blue Beetle gains his eye mask, and costume still has short sleeves at this time. D13 is a six-page story drawn by Bob Powell. The story is called The Mystery Sub, and it features Richard Anthony as D13. The Nazis appear as villains in this story. This is the first comic book story featuring the Nazis specifically as villains. This issue went on sale before World War II started, with Poland being invaded on September 1st, 1939. And Zanzibar is a four-page story drawn by George Tusca. Smash Comics number 3, October 1939, published by Quality Comics. Bozo the Robot takes center stage. This issue features the first installment of the John Law series. There is an Edgar Church Mile High Pedigree copy of this book, as well as a Billy Wright Pedigree and a Lamont Larson Pedigree. This book went on sale August 18th, 1939. The editor at Quality Comics was Ed Cronin. This comic was on the newsstands alongside Marvel Comics No. 1 and Superman No. 2. Bozo the Robot is featured in the cover, possibly drawn by Gil Fox in this early science fiction cover featuring Bozo the Robot and Black Ace as espionage. Also, Wings Wendell and Archie O'Toole are found in the inset pictures. The Plot to Take Alaska is the name of the nine-page espionage starring Black Ace story, written and drawn by Will Eisner. And the story features Colonel Atwater and President Franklin D. Roosevelt. Clinton Frank, Sport Trips, is a one-page story written and drawn by Gil Fox, featuring sports theme. Invisible Justice is a five-page strip titled The Pirate Submarine, written and drawn by Art Panagin. It's an early superhero strip featuring the Invisible Hood, plus the first appearance of John Webb and a gang of pirates. 
King O'Toole to Visit America is the title of the two-page Archie O'Toole story written and drawn possibly by Will Eisner under the alias Bud Thomas. John La Scientective is a seven-page story written and drawn by Harry Francis Campbell. The detective mystery features the first appearance and origin of John Law. Jane Withers is the focus of the one-page screen snapshot strip written and drawn by Bernard Bailey. Hugh Hazard and His Iron Man is a seven-page story written and drawn by George Brenner. It's an early science fiction strip, this one called Von Hutz's Plan, featuring Hugh Hazard and Bozo the Robot. Star Ranger Funnies, Volume 2, Number 5, October 1939, published by Centaur Publications. This is a bi-monthly published comic book, which went on sale August 19th, 1939. The editor at Centaur at this time was Joe Hardy, using the alias Uncle Joe. This comic was on the newsstands alongside Marvel Comics, Number 1, and Superman, Number 2. Red Man is featured on the cover with art by Art Panagin in this early Indian Western cover. Brief Biography of Radio Stars is a half-page text article written by Joe Hardy featuring a bio of Alec Templeton. Gene Autry, the Singing Cowboy, is featured in a one-page Stars on the Rain story written and drawn by Gil Fox. And it's a biographical non-fiction article. Lion Lou is a two-page story written and drawn by Fred Gardiner, a humorous story. Medicine Man is a one-page strip written and drawn by Paul Gustafson. The Medicine Man's Traveling Curio Show features the alleged adult skull of Hamlet. He also has one of Hamlet as a six-year-old. India Notes is a one-page comic non-fiction story with facts about Indians and their way of life. Wonder World Comics number 6, October 1939, published by Fox Comics. This issue went on sale August 25th, 1939. It features highlighted art by Lou Fine, Will Eisner, and George Tusca. The editor at Fox at this time was Victor Fox. This comic was on the newsstands alongside Marvel Comics number 1 and Superman number 2. The Flame is featured on the cover drawn by Lou Fine in this early superhero cover. The Arson Ring of Mr. Crass is the title of the nine-page The Flame story, possibly written by Will Eisner under the alias Basil Barreld with art by Lou Fine, featuring Gary Preston as The Flame and the first appearances of Bonnie Lane and the villain J.B. Crass, and the story would be reprinted in The Flame number 1 in 1940. Yarko the Great appears in an eight-page story, possibly written by Will Eisner. The story is called The Blood Flower and is an early superhero strip featuring Yarko the Great, Li Wan, Wang, Leilani, and other vampiresses. Shorty Shortcake is a six-page story written and drawn by Jerry Iger under the alias Jerry Williams. The Death of Kan Gen Ki is the title of the Dr. Fung six-page story written and drawn by Bob Powell under the alias Arthur Dean, and it features the first appearance and death of Lotus Flower and the villain Kan Gen Ki. Tommy Taylor in Tibet is a two-page text story written by Jerry Iger with art by Bob Powell. K-51 Spies at War is five pages, possibly written by Will Eisner, under the alias Willis Renzi. Mob Buster Robinson is a five-page strip, with art by George Tusca, featuring Mob Buster Robinson, the district attorney, and John Sloan. Amazing Man number 6, October 1939, published by Centaur Publications. This issue went on sale September 14th, 1939. This issue features the origin of Amazing Man. This comic was on the newsstands alongside Marvel Comics number one and Superman number two. There is a Rockford pedigree copy of this book as well as a Billy Wright pedigree copy. The shark is featured on the cover drawn by Bill Everett in this early superhero comic book cover featuring the hand of the shark and Amazing Man. Amen, The Amazing Man is the 10-page story written and drawn by Bill Everett in his early superhero strip. Second appearance of Amazing Man, alias John Amen. The story also features Lucille Peabody, who is the kidnapped girl. 
John Amon is taken prisoner by a mysterious big boss and his gang who have kidnapped the daughter of a copper magnet for a ransom. However, the great question turns Amon into the green mist and uses him to terrorize the girl's father into paying the ransom. But the good side of Amon wins out and the girl is saved. Iron Skull is a seven-page strip written and drawn by Carl Burgos. Congo War Drums Part 2 is the title of a six-page story written and drawn by Paul Gustafson in this jungle theme story. Mini Midget, the Super Midget Caught in a Rat Trap is the title of the seven-page The Miniature Man story written by John Kolb. The character would later, and the strip would later be known as Mini Midget. The Ivy Menace is an eight-page story drawn by Tarp Mills. Discovered in the Valley of the Giants is the title of the seven-page Mighty Man superhero slash science fiction strip written and drawn by Martin Filchok. All-American Comics, number seven, October 1939, published by DC Comics. This issue features four different Mud and Jeff strips a month after the release of the comic Mud and Jeff, number one. This is the last issue to feature the Bobby Thatcher strip. Gerber rates this book an eight, or rare, on the Scarcity Index. This comic was on the newsstands alongside Marvel Comics, number one, and Superman, number two. The editor at this time was M.C. Gaines, and Sheldon Mayer was the assistant editor. Adventures in the Unknown was the cover feature drawn by Stan Ashmeyer, an early science fiction cover featuring the characters Ted Dolliver and Alan Kane. It's the first Robin Hood type character on cover of comics ever, and it's probably the first dinosaur ever featured on a comic book cover. A Thousand Years a Minute, Part 1, is the title of the Adventures in the Unknown six-page story written by Carl Claudie with art by Stan Ashmeyer. The early science fiction strip features Ted Dolliver and Alan Kane, who find themselves in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Rescued at sea, no one believes they've just come back from Mars. Scribbly is featured in a four-page story written and drawn by Sheldon Mayer. Large feature comic series one, number seven, Hayo Silver, the Lone Ranger to the Rescue. October 1939, published by Whitman. Gerber rates this book A7 on its rarity scale. The dimensions of this book were eight and a half by 11 and a third, still an oversized book, and the first nine issues have heavy, rough stock covers. The Lone Ranger is a fictional masked former Texas Ranger who fought outlaws in the American Old West with his Native American friend, Tonto. The character has been called an enduring icon of American culture. He first appeared in 1933 in a radio show. Hayo Silver, The Lone Ranger to the Rescue is the title of the cover feature drawn by Henry L. Valley in this classic Western Frontier strip featuring The Lone Ranger and Silver. The first page credits Hayo Silver, The Lone Ranger to the Rescue by Fran Stryker based on the famous radio series with Silver and Tonto, illustrated by Henry E. Valley. The Lone Ranger to the Rescue is featured in 47-page comic strip written by Fran Stryker with art illustrations by Henry L. Valley. Funny Pages, Volume 3, Number 8, October 1939, published by Centaur Publications. This is the final comedy cover in this title's run, as Centaur switched to danger and adventure scenes with the next issue. This issue features highlighted art by Tart Mills and Paul Gustafson. This issue went on sale August 28, 1939. Joe Hardy was the editor at Centaur at this time. The comic was on the newsstands alongside Marvel Comics Number 1 and Superman Number 2. Hold Your Hat Pop is the cover title drawn by Max Neal. It's the first roller coaster cover ever in comic books. The superhero The Arrow is featured in a six page story drawn by Paul Gustafson. Haunted House is the title of the two page comic strip Windy, written and drawn by Martin Filchok. It's a humor strip, but it's the third haunted house type story so far ever in comic books. Abdallah is a five-page strip written and drawn by Craig Fox. Diana Dean and White Goddess is the title of the Diana Dean in Hollywood four-page strip written and drawn by Tarp Mills. 
Amazing Mystery Funnies, Volume 2, Number 10, October 1939, published by Centaur Publications. The cover by Leo Mori features The Phantom of the Fair. This issue went on sale September 6, 1939. It has a New York World's Fair tie-in. The comic was on the newsstands alongside Marvel Comics Number 1 and Superman Number 2. Phantom of the Fair is featured on the cover, this really superhero cover. Speed Centaur appears in a nine-page superhero strip. Don Dixon appears in a six-page story, which is reprinted from the Don Dixon and the Hidden Empire Sunday Strip at Watkins Syndicate, one of the early science fiction comic stories. And Mars is the focus of the Space Mysteries one-page comic story. The Earth is Torn Open is the title of the eight-page Phantom of the Fair strip, written and drawn by Paul Gustafson in his early superhero title, featuring Phantom of the Fair plus Professor Harvey and Dean Andrews, the college university head. The story would be reprinted in Phantom Man number two in 1940. Keen Detective Funnies, Volume 2, Number 10, October 1939, published by Centaur Publications. This issue went on sale August 28, 1939. Masked Marvel cover is done by Ben Thompson. The editor at Centaur at this time was Joe Hardy. There is a Billy Wright pedigree copy of this book, as well as a Cosmic Aeroplane pedigree. This comic was on the newsstands alongside Marvel Comics Number 1 and Superman Number 2. The Masked Marvel is featured on the cover in this early superhero cover, possibly drawn by Ben Thompson. Masked Marvel is a 10-page strip, which is written and drawn by Ben Thompson, an early superhero strip which would be reprinted in Masked Marvel number 1 in 1940. Spark O'Leary Radio Newshawk is a 6-page detective strip written and drawn by Will Eli. And The Amazing Man is featured in a promotional ad from the publisher. Jumbo Comics number 10, October 1939, published by Fiction House. Overstreet calls this Lufine cover a classic. This was Fiction House's first comic book title. This issue is the first in the regular sized for the day, standard size 68 page format. Will Eisner, Dick Briefer, and Bob Kane all contribute art to this issue. Gerber calls this issue a scarce on the rarity index. There is a Davis Crippen D pedigree copy of this book. The book was published every other month. It went on sale August 9th, 1939. At this time at Fiction House, Malcolm Reese was the editor, Will Eisner, the art director, and Jerry Iger, the feature editor. Parts of this issue are reprinted from WAGS, the UK edition from Editor's Press Service, number 82, from September 1938. This comic was on the newsstands alongside Marvel Comics number one and Superman number two. Stuart Taylor in Weird Stories of the Supernatural is the cover feature in a science fiction picture drawn by Lou Fine featuring extraterrestrials and spears. Sheena appears in an eight page story drawn by Bob Powell in this classic jungle strip. And it is possibly reprinted from WAGS, an Australian edition. Sheena gets her leopard costume after Bob kills a leopard named Lita. Stuart Taylor in Weird Stories of the Supernatural is the eight-page story, possibly written by Kurt Davis, with art by Lou Fine, an early science fiction strip reprinted from WAG's Australia edition. And it was formerly called Weird Stories of the Supernatural. Bobby appears in a half-page humor comic strip written and drawn by Jerry Iger. Hunchback of Notre Dame is a two-page story adapted from Victor Hugo, the original author, with art now by Dick Briefer in this historical strip featuring Quasimodo, which is reprinted from WAGS, the UK edition, issue number 52, and this is the final installment of this strip. Wilton of the West is a five-page story with art by Lou Fine. It's a western frontier strip featuring the Crimson Rider. Spencer Steele is an eight-page story with art possibly by Will Eisner, giving credit to the Iger Eisner Shop, a detective mystery story featuring Spencer Steele and Miss Hawthorne. It's reprinted from WAGS Australia. It appears to be Eisner layouts or influence, but the shop is listed as the artist. The Hawk is an 11-page story written and drawn by Will Eisner in his historical strip, and this is reprinted from WAGS Australia edition, volume three, number 34.